God says, look at Saudi Arabia. Look carefully, for there is great wickedness brewing from there. Hi Tucker, 17 long days we've waited for this explanation. Now we are getting it today, and only a few days after Secretary Pompeo flew to Riyadh and demanded answers. What Saudi state television and the Saudi prosecutors are telling us and what they're releasing publicly is that they have now arrested 18 individuals connected to the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Now, the majority of those people, they say, were the same ones caught on CCTV in Istanbul, entering the consulate and then leaving shortly afterwards. And what they say happened inside was a fight effectively. I'll read you some of the statement. It says, a discussion between Khashoggi and the people who met him while at the consulate led to a fight and a clash with hands resulting in his death. And that line, with hands, uh, is very important. Remember, all the leaks we've heard from Turkey point towards torture, dismemberment, pulling off of fingers. So Saudi Arabia clearly trying to distance itself from the gruesome nature of this story that we've been hearing. Now, among the 18 who have been arrested, five high-ranking figures, and this is crucial, among them, a man called General Asiri. He is the deputy head of Saudi intelligence. He had trained in the US and the UK. He was, in fact, the former spokesman for the Saudi-led war in Yemen, a major figure in Saudi intelligence, and alongside him, a senior aide to Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince. But that is as far as the connection to the royal family goes. In fact, they are denying any involvement. In fact, they're saying that they have to push back on this, completely restructure the intelligence services in light of this. So they are coming with a line of total deniability. Now, Saudi sources also saying that the king himself reached out to President Erdogan a couple of hours before this news broke. He wants to smooth over relationships with that country. The last two weeks have been torturous over here, a geopolitical storm, and that he's trying to put to rest. But the bigger question now, can he settle issues with the U.S.? We're waiting for a statement from the White House now. Um, we are waiting for that, but what we have been hearing from uh, on Twitter are a number of senators. We've heard from Lindsey Graham. He isn't believing it. You remember a couple of days ago he came out firmly against Mohammed bin Salman. Well, he has been saying, to say I am skeptical, skeptical of the Saudi narrative about Mr. Khashoggi is an understatement. So this may smooth over some of the cracks as far as regional politics go. Whether or not it has a lasting issue in the U.S., we just don't know yet. We are getting breaking news constantly. I'm speaking to Saudi sources. This is the story we were expecting, the sense that this was an interrogation gone wrong. It was sanctioned by someone quite high level, but not in the royal family. That's what we are getting now. We have to see how it plays out. Is there lasting damage done between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia? We have to see one big question. Where is the body? Who sanctioned it? Why did 15 of them go to the consulate to interrogate one man? Those remain unanswered today, and we will try and bring you all of them as we get them from here. Tucker? Where's the body? Great question. Ben, thank you very much. So there you have it. Khashoggi is, in fact, dead, as we have already been told, and the Saudis did it. They admit it now. What should we make of this? Well, the usual head nodders on TV seem stunned by the news. They can hardly believe that a bloodthirsty medieval theocracy would do something like this. Really? The Saudis? The same people who cut off the hands of thieves and behead adulterers in public parks? The same regime that is currently prosecuting one of the world's cruelest wars in one of the world's poorest countries, Yemen. You're telling me these people murdered a political opponent? Doesn't sound like the Saudis we know. Come on. Of course they did it. We knew they did it. Their only concern was getting caught. Now they have been caught and they probably regret the whole thing. All of that makes sense. None of it is surprising. What is confusing is the wave of false posturing on display from our own mindless ruling class. Khashoggi's death, they're telling us, is now somehow the most important story in the world. Far more important than the many political murders China commits each year, far more than Saudi Arabia, or the countless children the Saudis have bombed and starved to death in Yemen. I see a king falling. Oh, I see a king falling. Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Solomon, Lord, you are not pleased.
God said if you would watch Saudi Arabia is hiding something and they will be caught with their pants down says the Lord they will be caught says the Lord Netanyahu listen to me Netanyahu you are afraid of what is happening in Iran forget that for a minute look to other countries for Russia has already made a decision this prophet was caught up and saw the table that they have stood at this prophet has heard how this dog that is from a junkyard is about to be released and how he will bite viciously but his attack shall not only be with Iran but it shall come against Saudi Arabia but the Lord says do not worry because while these cats and dogs are fighting America shall begin to bloom America shall begin to prosper America shall bring oil America shall bring oil America shall suddenly see a massive influx of new ideas and creativity a new energy is coming and it's coming soon says the Lord what did the prophet just say to you may I pose a question can the borders of Iran Pakistan Can the borders of Iraq, Saudi Arabia, can they stop Yeshua? No. Now hear me out, says the Lord. Mecca. How they have been fooled and cursed. That cursed stone which shall be unraveled and broken in pieces and I speak boldly today from this platform but respectfully Saudi Arabia you kept the oil you tried to deal with Russia God says you did the wrong thing for when you touch my church can my ecclesia be destroyed? Never. Yes, we know there will be tribulation and so it shall be and my people shall join me. But before that time, there is a global awakening. No, no, not just one town and city, not just one country, but many. Look how I invaded Egypt. You see, most people don't know this, but it was in Arabia that John the Baptist was beheaded. And it is in Arabia and Saudi Arabia shall and has persecuted more Christians than you realize. But God, I said, I will now make them accountable. How shall I do this? I will prosper the very country that they hate, calling them the great Satan new energy is arising yes. and God says even though oil shall always be fought after they shall be burning and burning and burning like you have never seen and there shall be fights and antagonism but God said I will cause a new one to rise up in this nation yes. and God said there will be a prophetic anointing that shall carry you until that year and that prophetic anointing says the Lord will bring prosperity to the soil of this country and to the families of this nation yes they have sinned America is not guiltless but God said when I weigh the balance when I weigh the scales when I set out the scales there is great iniquity in Saudi Arabia and all over that region and therefore watch with your eyes as the earth shakes and watch how this prosperity comes for now I set the prophetic seal upon my house and upon my church to prosper and prosper and prosper even more says the Lord of hosts. We have Thank the greatest you. economy mm -hmm. that we've ever had and numbers just came out today about job openings and everything else I mean it's incredible record mm -hmm. numbers so there's now, never been I a president you, with this yes. because your critics on the left would say oh no, no that's just a result of President Obama's policies yeah. finally taking effect yeah. what do you say to that years later mm -hmm. uh, if the opposition yeah. got into office instead of me they're gonna put more rules and regulations in they were going to do things with taxes that would have been a disaster raise taxes they were all gonna raise taxes we we're gonna do many other things so we had four point two 
last month, yeah. last quarter. Yeah. And everybody said that's impossible because the most it can go is two and, you know, very slowly. But it would never be up to that number. We had 4.2. Had the opposition gotten in, you would be at minus 4.2. You would be so low. You would have job numbers that would be so bad. You would have companies leaving this country, which they were flowing out of the country. Now they're flowing into the country. They're all wanting to be back in the United States, in America. And whenever I hear that, I say, isn't that sad that they can get away with it? You know, that's the opposition. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, he helped. He didn't even help. We had the slowest recovery in history, or I guess since the Depression, since the Great Depression. And we were heading down. Take a look at the early numbers, like the early numbers or the late numbers for him. We were heading down 1% GDP. We were going down, and we were going down fast. So when I hear that, and when professionals hear that, they laugh, even professionals from the other side. Sure. We opened it up, and it's great. Yeah. Well, that's a look. The economic accomplishments are uh, significant. Yeah. And uh, a significant. lot to be proud of, and I think people are feeling proud. better about things. That I need your prayer. I need your covering. Jane needs your covering. My children need your covering. Our team needs your covering. Prayer covering for protection. This is no small thing, people. It may seem like a small building here, but there are literally millions that are, that are watching all over the world at some point in time. And not many of them are friends. Many of them are great enemies. Carried above the, uh, I was carried above a, a, a table with Putin and, and four others. I did. I saw them writing things which I am not permitted to speak now. Otherwise, I won't be alive next week. I am not permitted to speak this now, but there will come a point when I can share it with the right authorities. And I will do it. And I will do it as I go to Israel. That is my duty. That is what he called me to do.